In Revelation 12, God revealed to John the vision of a woman, a child, and a dragon as part of a series of signs foreshadowing significant future events. This book, intended for God's servants, is full of mysteries about the future and the inevitable judgment that awaits the world. The first vision presents a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of twelve stars on her head. This great sign, described as the Mega Semion, introduces the events of the Great Tribulation as reported in chapters 12 to 14 of Revelation. The woman clothed with the sun, although not to be understood as a literal figure who will appear on earth, has been associated with various religious concepts throughout history. According to biblical interpretation, the woman may represent Israel. According to Joseph's dream, Jacob was represented by the sun, Rachel, Joseph's mother, by the moon, and the eleven stars by the children of Israel, who bowed down to Joseph. Joseph is now included among the other tribes of Israel, forming a constellation made up of twelve stars. According to Genesis 37, 9, Joseph had another dream and shared it with his brothers. He saw eleven stars, as well as the sun and the moon bowing down to him. This dream, like other Old Testament passages, depicts Israel, Zion, or Jerusalem, often as a woman, according to Hosea 2.19.20. The woman who gives birth, mentioned in Revelation 12.2, was pregnant and suffering labor pains. This event will be revealed later in the video. Soon afterwards, a terrible and powerful dragon appears, according to Revelation 12.3. This dragon is described as red, fierce, with seven heads and ten horns, all croned with diadems. It is important to understand that these representations are symbolic and not literal. The dragon symbolizes evil in all its strength and terrible nature. The seven heads, ten horns, and diadems represent power, authority, and knowledge conveying a sense of immense power and authority. In the book of Revelation, we find various female representations. Jezebel is associated with a religious system that promotes false teachings, Revelation 2.20. The great harlot is linked to false religion, Revelation 17.2. We also have the bride, associated with the church, prepared for marriage to the Lamb, Revelation 19.7.8 representing believers with ethical conduct and godly character. Now we witness the dragon wreaking even more havoc, as described in Revelation 12.4. His tail swept across the sky and dragged down a third of the stars, casting them to the earth. The dragon positioned himself in front of the woman about to give birth, with the intention of devouring her child. In verse 9, the dragon is explicitly identified as the ancient serpent, also known as the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Verse 4 reveals that Satan awaited the birth of Christ with the intention of destroying him. God did not create an evil being. He created angels capable of great joy and distinction in his glorious domain. But he also endowed them with free will. Some, like Michael and his angels, remained loyal to God, while others rebelled, becoming implacable enemies. The male child mentioned would rule all nations with a rod of iron, referring to Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who rules the world with divine authority. The effort to devour this child was seen in Herod's attempt to kill Jesus in his childhood and in Satan's attacks during Jesus' life. The ministry of Jesus, from his birth to his rapture to God, is described. The woman mentioned in Revelation 12:1, who gave birth to this child cannot symbolize the church because Jesus is the source of the church. Therefore, the woman represents Israel or Mary, the only entities capable of giving birth to Jesus. A deeper analysis reveals that this woman is Israel, not Mary, and the dragon, Satan, tries to devour the child. Christ, however, is born and taken to God and his throne. Satan tries to kill him, but Christ is raised from the dead and ascends to the Father. The crucial image to identify this woman is in the description of her labor pains. This prophetic image is found in some places in the Old Testament, such as in Micah 4-9-10, where it is compared to the agony of a woman in labor. Micah prophesied that Israel would be taken captive to Babylon, experiencing intense pain similar to that of a woman in labor. However, in the midst of their suffering, they would be rescued and redeemed by God. This prophecy was a message of hope, for it indicated that the Messiah would come and lead his people with the strength of the Lord. The woman fled to the desert, 
where God prepared a place for her to be fed for 1260 days, representing a period of anguish and persecution. Despite Satan's attack, God's people are spiritually safe. The battle in heaven between Michael and the dragon results in the defeat of the latter, who is cast down to earth with his followers. Revelation 12 describes a cosmic spiritual conflict where Satan and his followers march against heaven, but are defeated. The believer's strategy for overcoming Satan's attacks includes covering, confession, and courage. The accuser Satan is defeated by the power of Christ demonstrated on the cross. Satan's expulsion from heaven illustrates Christ's redemptive victory over him. However, Satan turns his attention to the woman who is given wings by the great eagle to fly into the desert where she is sustained for a time, times, and half a time away from the presence of the serpent. The serpent poured water like a river from his mouth to drag the woman away, but the earth came to her aid. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the river that the dragon had thrown out. Then the dragon raged against the woman and went to make war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's commandments and have the testimony of Jesus standing firm in them. Earlier, it was mentioned in verse 6 that the woman would flee to the desert for protection during times of tribulation. The verse picks up on this idea after noting the effect of Christ's victory over Satan. Satan seeks to attack, but the woman is given the wings of the great eagle to fly into the wilderness, where she will be protected for a set time. This image of being carried on the wings of an eagle reminds us of how the Israelites were saved in the desert. Satan tries tirelessly to destroy God's true followers, but his efforts are in vain. Their failure only fuels his anger and he turns his attention to the other believers who keep God's commandments and maintain the testimony of Jesus. The chapter gives us a timeline of these events. The woman represents the remnant of Israel who remain faithful to the Lord and give birth to the Christ. Satan attacks, but she is protected. His next move is to attack the church specifically those who keep God's commandments and maintain the testimony of Jesus. The narrative of Revelation reveals the magnitude of the spiritual battle throughout history, culminating in the final events that determine Christ's definitive victory over evil. It offers hope and direction for the faithful, encouraging them to remain firm in their faith and aware that Christ's victory on the cross is the foundation of Christian hope. Thus, as we await the final fulfillment of all things, we are called to an unwavering commitment to the teachings of Jesus and to living in accordance with God's commandments. May our hearts be filled with gratitude for the victory secured in Christ Jesus, and may we be lights in this world until we witness the fullness of the kingdom of God. If you are tired of living a life without Christ, make the loving invitation to start a new life by commenting below, I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my one and only Lord and Savior of my life. See you next time.